audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Sometimes when you take a good hard look at your various relationships with different people, you sense that not all of them are what they should be. So how do you breathe new life into them? And it's fabulous to be back with you again today as we take a look at bridge building from a different perspective. And do stay tuned because in just a few minutes I'll be telling you about the powerful prayer that could be coming your way to help you through whatever you happen to be dealing with in your life just at the moment. Relationships are a funny thing. We can be close to someone at one level But when it comes to really connecting with them at a meaningful level, we can be a million miles apart. We've all seen it. Socially, this couple looks like they have it all together, but at home, they hardly talk. So often, relationships are just relationships of convenience. There's nothing deep or rich or meaningful to them. And so life starts feeling, well, pretty hollow, right? I don't know if you've ever been to a cocktail party, but people stand around talking about superficial things and then when they run out of stuff to say, they make an excuse like, I just need to duck off to the bathroom or I'm just going to get another drink. We can't live our lives at that cocktail party level. Well, I guess we can, but what an empty, hollow life it is. So if we have a string of relationships like that, superficial and and hollow, what can you and I do to start turning those relationships around into lasting relationships. Not next week, not next month, today. Let's just take a moment to survey the landscape of relationships in our lives. Just think through the the deep, rich ones, the superficial ones, the people you love but seem to be a long way off, the people you butt up against who drive you bonkers at work. There's quite a variety, isn't there? Now, out of all of those, I just ask you to choose one or maybe two that matter to you the most. Just think of the people, the one or two that you'd really like to lift up to a new level. A month, six months looking back that you'd like to say, you know, I started something back then. I'm so glad that I did it. Closeness, intimacy, connecting with someone is so rewarding, isn't it? But so often we don't know how. Where do I start? I'm I'm supposed to be close to my wife or husband. But we're a million miles away. How how do I start? My boss at work is such a nice person, but, you know, we just don't connect. Where where do I begin? When we've drifted apart, or or perhaps never been as close as we'd like to be to someone, or, or as close as we know we should be, we need to do something about it. Okay, have you got those people, one or two relationships in your mind, Let me ask you something. Are you prepared to do something about them? Are you prepared to invest into those relationships? Because if so, I'm going to pray for you right now. Father, you know each one of us. You know the people that you've put next to us. You know the grace and the blessing that you have planned in those relationships. And Father, you know how lousy we can be at this sometimes. So Father, I ask in the name of Jesus Christ that you would do something in each one of us today that you would breathe a new spirit, a new life, a new desire into our hearts to have this relationship. And as we just spend a little bit of time together today, Father, I pray that you will start a new work in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're going to look at two things. I like to keep things simple. Two things that you and I can do to breathe new life into a relationship. Yesterday on the program, we spoke about differences. The fact that I'm different to you, you have different strengths to me, I have different weaknesses to you, we both need each other. Just like the body needs eyes and ears and mouth and nose and hands and feet and kidneys and stomachs, the body needs all of those things. They're all part of the one body, but they're different. And sometimes we can sit there comparing and looking at each other and saying, well, you know, I'm not as good looking as that one or I'm not as smart as that one and, oh, I wish that one was faster like I am. Yeah, we compare and what a waste. An ear is an ear, a nose is a nose, an eye is an eye and a mouth is a mouth and that's just the way it was meant to be. Praise God. So the first thing that we can do to breathe new life into a relationship is to resign from the renovation committee. 
over. No more. I am not going to try to change this person anymore. Instead, I'm going to accept them for who they are. Today, tomorrow, the next day, and for the rest of our lives together. I am no longer going to try and change them. When you and I take a decision like that, it shows. The other person, all of a sudden, starts to sense that we're happy with who they are. We accept them just the way they are. Maybe you're a teenager. You'd like them to go out and get a real job, but they just want to be an artist. I know, it's not a real job. But if that's who they are, can we accept them for that? Can we validate them? Can we encourage them? Can we say, you know, the world needs artists. Go and be a great artist. Maybe wives, your husband, you'd you'd like him to be more attentive, but he seems to need some space right now. Will you let him have space without nagging him? Will you say, darling, I know when you get home, you just need a little bit of time to watch the news? Husbands, maybe your wife, you'd like her to have the house tidier than it is when you get home. Now, that sounds old-fashioned, but I have to tell you, that's what's in a lot of men's hearts. But she, she doesn't feel cherished by you. You're trying to get something out of her, but the one thing that she needs more than anything else is to know that you cherish her and value her just the way she is, whether she cleans the house the way you want it or not. Today, you and I can decide to have a relationship, not for what we get out of it, but instead to give to the other person, to love them, to experience their beauty, to just accept them the way they are. The second thing we can do after we resign from the renovation committee is say, how can I serve them? How can I meet their needs? How can I do something practical that's just what they need, just what they want? Sit back, have a look, have a listen. What are they saying? What's in their language? You know, we hear each other talk, but we never listen. Is this person at work aggressive? Maybe they're just lonely. Is the neighbour grumpy? Maybe they're just having a hard time with the kids and need a break. I mean, husbands and wives, what are your real issues? What are your real needs? So often we look at relationships from the perspective of what can I get out of it? What can I squeeze out of this relationship for me? Can I give you a response to that? No! What can I give? Are we going to be like a farmer that constantly wants to reap but never plants or waters or weeds? Come on, this is the crux of a relationship. We want to get without giving. Actually, in relationships, all we can control directly is what we give. The getting is the fruit of the giving. And it's largely out of our control. Jesus figured it out. He said, the greatest among you will be the servant of all. For whoever exalts themselves will be humbled, and whoever humbles themselves will be exalted. When we become the servant of the people we want to have relationships with, we stand out from the crowd. We become a bridge builder. We step down off our little pulpits and get our hands dirty. Just two things. Accept people for who they are and serve them without expecting anything in return. Practical, real, decent, honest, and watch that relationship blossom and be like light and food and water. Greatness isn't being famous. Greatness is the honour and respect that we build in people's hearts when we take them just as they are and we serve them. Before we go, I'd just like to remind you that if you have a prayer need, we would love to pray for you. Listen, the only sort of prayer that the Bible teaches about is the sort that has powerful results. Just let that sink in. The only sort of prayer that the Bible teaches about is the sort that has powerful results. So if you'd like us to pray with you, in fact, if you'd like our whole prayer community to pray with you, stop by online at PowerfulPrayer.org to share your prayer request. It's completely confidential. Your name won't be displayed. And in fact, while you're there, perhaps you could pray for one or two others and leave them an encouraging word as well. The Bible says that the prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. So let us pray for you and with you. And let's just see what God does, how he intervenes, how he chooses to bless you. That web address again is PowerfulPrayer.org. I'm Bernie Diamond. I'll catch you again same time tomorrow. 
with a different perspective. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au. 